So today we're going to talk about Crime and Punishment, which is an amazing psychological novel written by the Russian writer Fyodor Dostoevsky. Crime and Punishment was first published in 12 installments in Russian in 1866 and then in one volume in 1867. I have uh, read this English language edition translated by David Macduff and published by Penguin Classics. But as usual, before going into the book itself, I'd like to talk about its author, Fyodor Dostoevsky, and the context in which he uh, wrote this novel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Juan and I post a new spoiler-free book review every Saturday. And the best way not to miss any of my reviews is for you to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. So let's talk about Dostoevsky and Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment is set in the Russian city of St. Petersburg in the late 19th century. And Dostoevsky makes a meticulous description of the city in this novel. I've never been to St. Petersburg, but I got a very vivid sense of the city reading this novel, particularly the class differences and the violence of living in a big city that some of us, many of us perhaps, have experienced if we've lived or visited one. Anyway, let's talk about the author, uh, Fyodor Mikhailovich uh, Dostoevsky, who was born in Moscow in 1821, so he was in his 40s when he wrote uh, Crime and Punishment. Dostoevsky belonged to the Russian nobility, but his father was a doctor and I don't think he grew up in luxury. I don't think his uh, family had that much money. Uh, Dostoevsky studied engineering in St. Petersburg but dropped out at some point and instead worked as a translator and then as a writer in the 1840s when he was in his early 20s. In his youth, uh, Dostoevsky's politics were firmly against the Tsarist regime. That would radically change later in life, but because of his involvement, he was arrested and exiled in Siberia between 49 and 54. No doubt his exile and forced labor in Siberia served as an inspiration for some of his novels, including uh, Crime and Punishment, because um, there in Siberia he had to live and work alongside criminals, murderers, thieves, you name it. After his liberation in 54 and back in St. Petersburg, Dostoevsky will have to rebuild his literary career, which he had begun uh, before his arrest. Crime and Punishment is the first of Dostoevsky's uh, masterpieces. Later, he wrote many other important novels such as The Idiot or The Demons. His last novel was The Karamazov Brothers, which I actually read first and have already reviewed here on my channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to that review here in case you haven't watched it and are interested. Now, having read both uh, Crime and Punishment and the Karamazov Brothers, I would suggest uh, reading Crime and Punishment first, but having said that, if you only wanted to read one novel by Dostoevsky, I would then say read the Karamazov Brothers. Okay, now let's go into the novel itself. And what I'm going to do now is talk about the story, but without making any spoilers. If you want to hear me talk about the plot and the themes in more detail, I suggest that you watch this review to the very end. But for now, suffice it to say that the protagonist of Crime and Punishment is a former um, college student, Rodion Romanovich Raskolnikov. He had to quit his studies because he didn't have enough money, so one day Raskolnikov decides to kill a pawnbroker he knows, who he thinks is a disgusting old woman, and her name is Aliona uh, Ivanovna. Raskolnikov thinks that by killing that one person, he'll be doing good to a lot of people. For one thing, because he thinks that someone like her only causes suffering to other people whom she exploits for money. But also uh, because he thinks that with the money he'll steal from her, he'll be able to carry on with his studies and also help out his family and other people he cares about, perhaps. So the basic and central question in this novel is whether committing one crime, in this case murdering one person, could be the source of good for several people. And in a world where unfortunately violent crime is something that happens all the time and where many of us, most of us I hope, cannot get our heads around many um, heinous crimes we hear about, Crime and Punishment is a novel that confronts us with that reality and with the psychology of a murderer. As I said, if you want to know the full plot with spoilers, 
keep watching, do keep watching. I'll let you know before I start discussing the plot in detail so you can stop watching if you don't want any spoilers. Crime and Punishment is a suspense novel, so I wouldn't want to spoil that for people who haven't read it yet, which is why I'm leaving all the spoilers to the end. If you were a Raskolnikov, and I believe Crime and Punishment makes us empathize with him, would you be able to live with yourself after killing someone? I'd like to assume that people watching this would not kill anybody in the first place, but let's say you did. Do you think you would be able to carry on as if nothing had happened? Of course not. And that's what makes Crime and Punishment so fascinating. This novel puts us in the shoes of a criminal, a murderer, and we must walk in those shoes for the whole novel and experience what Raskolnikov experiences, mostly psychologically. Now, Raskolnikov is alone and must live with a heavy weight over his shoulder. Dostoevsky uh, writes about Raskolnikov's loneliness masterfully. But we're not asked to stay in Raskolnikov's mind all the time. For one thing, Crime and Punishment is not a first-person narrative, but more importantly, there are many other characters and we do get to hear from all of them. In my view, that profusion of different voices is what makes a Crime and Punishment such a complex novel, but this also allows us to see the story from many different points of view, which is, I believe, a so enriching. Now, one of the key characters, uh, other than Raskolnikov, of course, is Sonia, who is a prostitute he's in love with. I would particularly ask you to focus on the conversations between Raskolnikov and Sonia when you read uh, Crime and Punishment, if you haven't done it yet. Now, talking about the novel more broadly, I would say that what is genuinely great about it is the same thing that makes great novels great. And that is, they foster empathy and even compassion for characters that we wouldn't necessarily feel uh, compassion toward otherwise. Now, Dostoevsky manages to foster, I think, compassion for a murderer, Raskolnikov, in this novel. And I think, I do think that's what makes this novel great. But, of course, this is just my opinion. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. And now I'm going to say goodbye to those viewers who haven't read the novel and don't want to hear any spoilers from me. Now, between now and the end of this video, I am going to talk about the plot of Crime and Punishment and its themes in a lot more detail, and there will be spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, you should stop watching this video right now, and I'll see you again again soon, I hope, for another book review. And for those of you who are still watching this and want to go deeper into the novel, I hope you stay until the very end. So let's do this. So let's begin with the plot. So Raskolnikov is a former university student who lives in a small loft in a random building in St. Petersburg. He is sickly and poor and probably spends way too much time talking to himself. But he's also an intelligent and pride young man. When we first met him, he's thinking of committing a crime, but initially we're not sure what crime that would be, at least until he goes to see an old pawnbroker, Alyona Ivanovna, to pawn his watch. After the visit to the pawnbroker, he goes to a bar, and there he meets a guy called Mar Melodov, who is on a five-day drinking binge and now is afraid to go back home and face his family understandably. Mer Melodov tells Raskolnikov all about his sad life and his lack of money. His wife, Katerina Ivanovna, is sick and his daughter, Sonia, works as a prostitute to help support the family. Raskolnikov takes uh, Mar Melodov back home where he meets his wife, Katerina. The following day, Raskolnikov gets a letter from his mother, Pulcheria Alice Alexandrovna. He learns that his sister, Dunya, is engaged to be married to to a government worker called Luzhin. Also, he learns that the whole family is planning to move to St. Petersburg. He goes to another bar and overhears a student saying that the pawnbroker, Aliona Ivanovna, should be dead because she only causes suffering to other people anyway. Later, Raskolnikov finds out that the broker will be alone at her place the following evening. He sleeps terribly, and the next day he gets himself an axe, and in the evening he goes to the old pawnbroker's apartment and kills her just like that. He proceeds to look for money and things he could sell when the pawnbroker's sister, Elisabetta, comes in. So, he kills her as well. He manages to escape and go back to his apartment. 
The next day, he is worried that there may be traces of blood on his clothes. He then gets a summons from the police, but it turns out to be totally unrelated to the murders he committed the day before, the evening before. What the police actually want to talk to him about is the money he owes his landlady. But Raskolnikov is so nervous that he faints at the police station. Naturally, that makes the police suspect that there is something actually wrong with him. When Raskolnikov goes back to his loft, he gathers all the stuff he had stolen from the old pawnbroker uh, the night before and buries it somewhere out of the way. He then visits his friend Razumikhin, who offers him a job, but Raskolnikov turns it down. Back in his apartment, Raskolnikov goes to sleep, but again has nightmares. Now, nightmares and fit fitful sleep. Mm, that's something that happens to him and to other characters a lot in this novel. Anyway, he spends four feverish and delirious days and when he comes to his senses and wakes up, he finds out that his housekeeper Natasha and his friend Razumikhin have been looking after him all that time. He also finds out that in the four days that he has been out of it, uh, there have been two visitors, Zomizov, a doctor, and Zamyatov, a young police detective. Everybody notices that Raskolnikov becomes exceedingly uneasy whenever anybody mentions the murders of the pawnbroker and her sister. His own sister, uh, his own sister's uh, fiance, Luzhin, the government official, also comes to visit Raskolnikov. They have an argument, after which Raskolnikov goes to a cafe where he meets uh, Zamyatov, the police detective, and almost confesses the truth. After that meeting, he goes back to the scene of the crime. And on his way back home, he learns that Marmeladov has been run over. Uh, Marmeladov is that drunkard from earlier, Sonia's father. So he takes uh, this guy back to uh, his apartment and there Marmeladov dies. He also meets Marmeladov's daughter Sonia and gives her all the money he has. Then he goes back to his loft with his friend and he faints when he finds his sister and mother are there waiting for him. Once he comes to uh, back to his senses, Raskolnikov chases both out of his room. He also tells them, uh, tells his sister uh, Dunya rather, to break up with Luzhin. It also turns out that his friend Razumikhin, uh, well, he falls in love with Dunya. The next day, Razumikhin talks to his friend's uh, mother and sister and try to explain to them what Raskolnikov is really like. The three of them then go back to the loft. There, Samisov, the doctor, tells them that Raskolnikov is doing much better. Uh, so Raskolnikov then apologizes for having yelled at the three of them the night before and tells them that he gave all his money to the Marmeladov family. Despite that apology, he soon becomes mad again and orders Dunia not to marry uh, Luzhin. It turns out that Dunia is due to meet Luzhin that evening. Luzhin naturally doesn't want to see Raskolnikov, but Dunia asks him to attend the meeting, please, and he agrees to that. Sonia comes to see Raskolnikov, but is embarrassed to see that his whole family is there. The reason for her visit is to invite him uh, to her father's funeral. Now, someone follows Sonia on her way back to her apartment. We find out that that strange man is Svidriya Gailov. Who is that guy? Well, he's Dunia's former employer. Anyway, more on that later. Raskolnikov goes to see the official in charge of the murder investigation, some guy called uh, Porfiry Petrovich, who happens to be a relative of his friend uh, Razumikhin. He finds uh, Samyatov there. Now, uh, Raskolnikov and Porfiry argue about the murders, and that makes Raskolnikov think that Porfiry actually suspects him and is trying to set him up into confessing. Later, Raskolnikov and his friend try to work out if that is indeed the case. Now, while Raskolnikov has been away from his loft all that time, a man had gone there looking for him. Raskolnikov goes after that man in the street and then the man calls him a murderer. That night, Raskolnikov dreams about the murder once again, and when he wakes up, he sees a stranger in his loft. And that stranger turns out to be Zvidriya Gailov, uh, Dunia's former employer. He is there to tell Raskolnikov that he wants Dunia to break up with Luzhin because he thinks Luzhin isn't worthy of her. He's willing to give Dunia a ton of money if she only broke up her engagement. He also tells Raskolnikov that his late wife, uh, Marfa Petrovna, left Dunia money in her will 
clearly he's making that up. Raskolnikov turns down uh, his offer and thinks he might be crazy. Now, after uh, Svidriagailov goes away, Raskolnikov and Razumihin go to meet Dunya. And, their, and her mother and Luzhin at a restaurant. There, Razumihin tells Raskolnikov that he is sure that the police suspect him. Actually, before they get to the restaurant. At the restaurant, they talk about that boss guy and the money he wants to give Dunia. Luzhin and Raskolnikov get into an argument and Luzhin ends up offending everyone. Because of that, Dunia breaks up with him anyway and kicks him out of the restaurant. And as you can imagine, everyone is happy about that. After Luzhin leaves, uh, Razumihin talks about his plans to go into the publishing business. Everything seems to be fine for a moment, but then Raskolnikov tells everybody that he does not want to see them anymore. Raskolnikov leaves the room, but Razumihin goes after him. I mean, after all, he's his best friend. And when he catches up with him in the street, he realizes just by looking at him that Raskolnikov is guilty of the murders of the pawnbroker and her sister. Raskolnikov goes back to his mother and sister and tells them that he will always be there for them. Raskolnikov visits Sonia. He finds out that Sonia was a friend of the pawnbroker's sister, Lizabetta, whom he also killed. Then he asks Sonia to read the biblical story of Lazarus out loud. Zvidriagailov happens to be next door and it's dropped on the it, it drops on the whole conversation. The next day, Raskolnikov goes to the police department again to see Porfiry uh, Petrovich with the excuse of requesting the watch he pawned. Raskolnikov cannot help but feel once again that Porfiry is trying to set him up so he would confess to the crime of murdering the pawnbroker and her sister. The tension becomes so unbearable uh, for Raskolnikov uh, so that at some point he explodes and accuses Porfiry of playing games with him. At that very moment, the person who has been held as a suspect for the murder, someone called Nikolai, comes into the room and falsely, for some reason, confesses to the murders. Now, Raskolnikov is free to leave and on his way to uh, the memorial dinner for Mar Meladov, he meets the mysterious man who had called him a murderer earlier. It turns out that that mysterious man actually doesn't know shit about the murders anyway. So, cut to the apartment that Luzhin shares with a guy called Lebeziatnikov. <laughs> Luzhin is talking about how much he hates Raskolnikov, because, uh, mostly because he thinks he's responsible for Dunya breaking up uh, their engagement. Luzhin has been also invited to the memorial dinner for the drunk guy who died earlier, but he refuses to go. Instead, he sees Sonia and gives her some money. Now, the memorial dinner organized by the widow Katerina is a disaster. Not many people show up and the ones who do are drunk except for Raskolnikov. Uh, Luzhin arrives after all to make things even worse and when he does he accuses Sonia of stealing money from him. Of course, Sonia denies this but then the money is found in her pockets. Just when everyone is about to call Sonia a thief, uh, Luzhin's roommate comes in and tells everyone that he saw Luzhin slip money into Sonia's pocket earlier. Raskolnikov thinks that Luzhin meant to embarrass him by smearing Sonia. Then Luzhin goes away, obviously, and Katerina and her landlady start a fight because why not? Later that same evening, Raskolnikov confesses the murders to Sonia and they talk about it and his motives a lot. So this is one of those conversations that I said you should pay attention uh, to when you read this novel. Uh, anyway, so they have that conversation. Sonia tries to convince Raskolnikov to confess. Uh, Lucien's flatmate comes in and tells them that uh, Katerina has lost her marbles and she's now in the streets with her children begging for money. So Sonia goes after her and tries to find them and Raskolnikov goes to his loft and talks to his sister. He goes back out again and sees Katerina behaving like a lunatic. Uh, she's arguing with a cop, then she faints and later um, in her room she dies. Yet another death. A lot of people die in this novel. Zvidriya Gailov shows up and offers both to pay for the funeral expenses and the care of her children. Oh, and he also tells Raskolnikov that he knows he's the murderer of the pawnbroker and her sister. After that, Raskolnikov roams the streets in confusion. Just uh, think about everything that has happened, right? First, he confesses to Sonia. Then Katerina goes uh, loopy and dies. 
that's a lot for one day. So back in his loft, uh, his friend Razumihin confronts him. Razumihin wants to know if he has gone nuts and also tells him how much pain he's causing his mother and sister because of his behavior. Then, to make things worse, uh, Porfiry shows up and apologizes for how he had treated uh, Raskolnikov back at the police station. And yet, he says he does not believe in Nikolai's confession. He goes further and accuses Raskolnikov of the murders, even though he says he cannot arrest him due to lack of evidence. That's why he encourages him to confess. You know, the usual story, if you confess, the sentence will be lighter, that kind of thing that we've seen in a lot of movies. So, later Raskolnikov meets Svidriagailov in a cafe. Svidriagailov tells him that he's now engaged to a young girl, a 16-year-old girl, even though he still carries a torch for Dunya. Later, Svidriagailov makes Dunya go to his place, asks her to marry him again, or for the first time, I think, and after she turns him down, he threatens to rape her. Charming. Apart from the two murders at the beginning of this novel, crime and punishment is full of violence or the threat of violence. So, anyway, what happens? Dunia shoots Svidriagailov but misses. Finally, Svidriagailov gets the hint, as it were, and lets her go. He takes the gun, however, and roams the streets. He gives money to Dunia and to the family of the young girl he's engaged to and goes to a hotel to spend the night. After another nightmare-ridden sleep, he wakes up in the morning and kills himself. Raskolnikov uh, visits his mother to uh, tell her that he will always love her. And when he goes back to his loft, he tells Dunya that he will confess. Then he goes to see Sonia. She gives him a crucifix. He goes to the police station and when he hears that Svidriya Gailov or Gailov has killed himself, he almost changes his mind about confessing. However, seeing Sonia there at the police station makes him confess. The narrative then cuts forward to a year and a half later where uh, Raskolnikov is imprisoned in Siberia. And remember that Dostoevsky himself had spent years in Siberia, decades uh, before writing Crime and Punishment. And like Dostoevsky, instead of a death sentence, Raskolnikov has a reduced sentence of forced labor. Anyway, Sonia is now living in the uh, nearest town to the prison and she visits him regularly. We learn then that after Raskolnikov's arrest, his mother had gone crazy and died, of course, and also that Razumihin and Dunya are now married. Finally, Raskolnikov expresses remorse for the murders and realizes that he loves Sonia after all. The end. So what do we have here? We have a character, Raskolnikov, who at the beginning of the novel and almost until the very end feels completely alienated from society. He thinks so highly of himself that everybody else seems inferior to him. People are just pawns to him, or rather they are the tools he needs to get what he wants or they simply get in the way of him getting what he wants. He feels alone. And I said earlier that Dostoevsky does a great job in portraying that here. But he's really not alone. Plenty of people love him. His mother, his sister, his best friend, and then, of course, Sonia. But he spends much of the novel pushing all of those people away. Raskolnikov is also a nihilistic character, somebody who seems devoid of any human emotion. He also doesn't care for anybody else's feelings, which he utterly rejects. We do see an evolution in Raskolnikov throughout the novel, and in the end, in the very end, at the very end, he rejects nihilism in favor of love. I think the fact that he falls in love with a prostitute also has a biblical echo. Now, the title of this novel can be a bit misleading because if you think about it, the crime happens in the first few pages, in part one, almost uh, suddenly, and then the punishment doesn't arrive until the epilogue, which means that you must read almost the whole novel before you get to the punishment part. Most of what the novel is about is the mental torture that Raskolnikov goes through. All those nightmares he has, his paranoia that people know he's guilty even before anybody begins to suspect him. Crime and Punishment explores Raskolnikov's guilty conscience and his stress and anxiety after committing murder. And this is what makes Crime and Punishment so difficult to read and why I failed in early attempts to read it, I think. Also, it is hard to spend time in the kind of poverty and destitution that Crime and Punishment portrays so well. It is not exactly fun, and yet 
the novel is incredible. But if you have made it to the end of this video, please let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section below. And this is all for me for now. I hope that you are all doing very well and I hope to see you again very soon for another book review. Bye for now.